information about this camp, about the uh, base and user and DLC, uh, well-known DLC player? Uh, hi, um, thanks to, for coming. Um, I'm Jean-Baptiste Kempf, I'm a French uh, developer, um, and I'm going to speak about uh, VideoLine and VLC 2.2. .2. Um, careful, up. Um, so my name is Jean-Baptiste, and I'm the president of the VideoLine nonprofit organization. I've been working on VLC for a bit too long, so I don't count anymore, uh, but it's been great, and uh, I'm still coding those days. Um, so. VideoLAN uh, is a non-profit organization that started as a project and is doing a lot of uh, open source uh, multimedia software and not only VLC. Um, the main one is VLC by the size of the how many people use it, but we have other cool stuff. So if you know my talks, there is a very long story about why um, VLC started. So if you don't know the story, I can give you for a couple of beers uh, tonight or go to my other awesome talks. But the short story is some people wanted to uh, play Doom and they couldn't, so they made VLC. Uh, <laughs> that's the short version, but some of you uh, know it and I can take it. But not today because I don't just have 25 minutes. So VLC, no one knows about it. Everyone knows about the cone player, which is this completely crazy icon that plays everything you throw at it, even VHS videos, if you push it. Um, <laughs> so VLC has been known mostly because it can play everything, everywhere, uh, most of the codecs, and starting a long time ago, especially when people had like those inferior OS like Windows, where you had to install codec packs, um, or other stuff like Mac OS, where you couldn't play DVDs without VLC. Uh, so that's how VLC become known. It was also really um, good because one of the main idea, because it was a, a network player, was you were able to play video files that were getting downloaded. So when you were actually downloading a Disney file and you could just like, oh, see that it was an adult movie, <laughs> or if you were uh, doing the opposite also. <laughs> so that was great in the... Um, Idonkey days, and that's also one of the main reasons pe uh, people starting using VLC. Those days, VLC runs every fucking where, uh, from Windows to Mac to Linux. But <coughs> since 2.1, OS2 support is merged, and we can play VLC on OS2, and the three users are very happy. <laughs> <laughs> We've been spending a lot of time um, to port on the very bad uh, mobile open rating systems, um, including Android, iOS, Windows Phone, and soon many others, I hope. Um, VLC is very portable. Uh, we've done that since the beginning, and we want to go on. Um, a bit numbers. Yeah, you crowd don't care, but mostly what we do is one million downloads per day. Uh, since we started counting, it's two billion downloads. Um, it's important to know that it's probably one of the largest, in terms of users, of course, uh, open source software um, done by, like, actually bazaar people. Right? We don't, we are not Mozilla. We don't have 500 million dollars per year, so we are doing that on our free time. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's important to know that we don't count a Linux distribution, of course, and we don't count download.com and all those crappy websites that repackage VLC with awesome toolbars. <laughs> Um, jokes aside, uh, from the statistics from Apple, it's installed on one every six Macs, and it's on the top 15 um, software used on Windows. That's pretty, pretty cool, I think. And you don't care, but it's French. <laughs> Sometimes French can do stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so as I was saying, VLC is great because it has support for so many stuff, from DVDs, Blu-rays, network streams, Porn streams, uh, external uh, hardware, DVB, um, mm, satellite, uh, SDI, and so many others. Um, VLC is used a lot for the users, but also uh, by broadcasters uh, to do transcoding and restreaming. Uh, this is a common use case. Um, so that was one of the first uh, VideoLAN client uh, version on GNOME, I don't know, one something. Um, and that's the first DVD that was played by uh, VLC, which is GoldenEye, as you can see. Um, and this is why most of the release names until 1.0 were named after GoldenEye characters, because that's what the first one they managed to work. As you can see, it's called VideoLand Client at that time, because it was really the client part of the VideoLand solution. And as I was saying, VideoLand did a lot of other stuff, like VLS, VideoLand servers, but also VideoLand started the X264 project, um, libdvd CSS, 
and now libluray and so many other libraries that are used mostly either by, by vlc or by professional like dvblast or x264 so we come from then to that that is 2.1 with ponies uh, gnome 3 sorry <laughs> so that's uh, so far the version we have um i need to mention that um VLC is done by a very small team. Uh, the core team is five to 10 people, uh, depending on how you count. But we are quite large. We have around 600, 700 contributors um, since the beginning of VLC. Every year we have 150 more or less contributors. So a lot of people come, send a patch and go away. Um, that's, um, that's important uh, because that means that a lot of the core developers spend more time now reviewing patches and actually coding. Uh, which is sad, but that's the cool thing. But that also means that the decision when we merge features is not based on the usefulness of the feature, but how maintainable. Because you're going to come and say, hey, I'm going to give you that. And you say, oh, that's a really cool feature. Hey, I'm going to stay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 you don't stay. I mean, since when I started in 2005, there were three people who are still active uh, from that time. So we, before merging the code, we really think, can I maintain this code without you? And if yes, we merge. If not, well, too bad. Um, it has been the case that many times we had uh, some really cool features that we removed because they were not maintainable. Being maintainable is important because that's how we can do cross-platform and caring about uh, so many different platforms. <coughs> Most of the decisions are done by the people who code. So um, the Videoland nonprofit does not de do any decision on VLC. It's the code, the coders, the more you code, the more important you are. Mostly we try to have to reach a consensus. That's why we do meetings. And if there is no consensus, do a fork. Uh, so far, none of the forks of VLC have actually uh, lived on. Um, VLC does not exist. Uh, so VLC is a 200 lines of code wrapper around libvlc. So VLC, as you mentioned, it is a full multimedia framework like uh, QuickTime, GStreamer, uh, Media Foundation, DirectShow. It builds a graph at runtime depending on what you need to do, and it does that with a lot of modules. Um, and that's how you see it. So libvlc is a very, very, very stable API. We never break the API. We never break the ABI. Um, and um, everything happens in the core. So, um, VLC is just a wrapper that called libvlc, and everything is done in the core, and the core is managing the modules. The core is very light, um, around 80, 100,000 lines of code. It doesn't know any codec, uh, any format. What's the role is just to do memory, networking, file, and thread abstraction above the <laughs> operating system. It's also able to do the module loading, because that's one of the major um, major things to do. I, I need a decoder, I need an encoder, I need a, a, a stream out and build the graph. And then just the clock synchronization between audio, video, subtitles. But nothing else is done in the core. Uh, it's really cool because that's one of the reasons why VLC was, is so popular compared to competitor like Mplayer. Uh, <laughs> because we were able um, very early to take the best, um, the best technology from uh, the OS. For example, a lot of people say, OK, I'm going to do a video output. Well, let's take OpenGL because it works everywhere, right? Who has done OpenGL in the past? Yeah, does it work everywhere? When it works, it works. Yes, it does work, not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, in the best idea, yes, it would be nice. But in, in, real, in real life, it doesn't. Because for example, it doesn't work on Windows XP, it doesn't work on Android, of course not on BS, B, BOS and OS2. Uh, and it's also the same for um, audio output. Uh, you can use OpenAL, it's going to be great everywhere. Yes, but all those libraries that are great and work everywhere usually have lots of issues. And mostly they don't work correctly on one platform. And for audio and video where you need to be very precise, this is very annoying. So this um, modularity of VLC is one of the best uh, ideas that was done. Uh, I'm not sure they did it for the good reason, but it was a good idea. <laughs> So this is, I'm finished with the general VLC introduction because some people have never seen me talking. Um, I do longer talks about that and you should come to see me too. VLC 2.2. Um, so VLC 2.10 was released in October 2013, so almost one year and a half ago. 
Um, it was called uh, Rincewind, which is uh, one of, uh, who knows? <laughs> yes, Terry Pratchett's uh, Discworld, because we started uh, numbering, <coughs> naming uh, our release since Terry Pratchett Discworld since 1.0. Um, we made something like five or six uh, point releases uh, uh, to 2.1.5. We counted 400 million downloads, I think. And the last one, 2.1.5, is already at 245 million. So that's pretty OK. Um, it is quite a stable release in terms of crashes, um, which is different from the 2.0. But we have important regressions in usability. Uh, some stuff don't work anymore uh, because we made some mistakes. And um, so it's, it was a good release, but we could have done better. Which brings us to 2.2. Um, Weatherwax um, is almost ready. We had around 500, um, five, sorry, 5,000 comics. Uh, it's been way too long to come, and I'm really sorry, we wanted to go faster, but um, we froze a long time ago, and we found so many regressions that we had to fix. Um, but I feel it's going to be a very strong release, um, because so far it's extremely stable. We fixed most of the important regression we find in 2.1, um, and also we did a lot of features that are for the users. Um, and also it's quite important that um, I went on with the uh, um, changing of licensing of uh, VLC modules, and most of the streaming output and encoding modules are now, now LGPL. Uh, before, I only did um, the playback part, so the streaming part. And libvlc is actually usable because we are using it a lot more. Uh, we have more um, users since we moved to LGPL. Um, and let's see about features. One of the most important 2.2 feature is a Linux bug. Um, so Linux complain on Google Plus. Uh, I don't know if you've seen about why can't VLC and with fuck, fuck, fuck in somewhere uh, <laughs> Linux style, right? Um, that you take the you, your phone in the wrong direction, and of course, then you need to be like that to watch. Or then you have an awesome feature in VLC, which is rotate, which is actually cropping when you rotate, which is completely useless. And the actual rotation feature you want is called transform, which is great and makes so much sense for the end users. So um, we started. We thought it was not a good idea. So we have now a, a auto rotation feature. So we detect in um, MP4 or MKV or RAW H.264 what is the rotation wanted by the camera of, uh, of the phone. And then we do auto-rotation by inserting the transform filter. But it's very bad because it's going to do mem copies and it's very slow. So what we did is that we are basically now extending the video output internal API. We ask the video output, hey, can you rotate? And if it says yes, we rotate directly on the GPU. If it doesn't, then we inser insert it. Which means that in most cases, except on Linux mainly, uh, it works directly. OpenGL on Mac, uh, Direct3D, but also Android uh, Media Codec. Um, we had to fight a bit with hidden APIs, but it works. Um, it basically works uh, directly. Um, for Win Linux and Xvideo, this very old Xvideo, uh, you can uh, actually, it will actually take uh, the transform filter and do it on the CPU before sending it to the GPU. So it's transparent. For 3.0, Linux, our Linux port is going to be using OpenGL by default, and so you wouldn't care anymore. <laughs> extensions. Um, we have had extensions and playlists and extend, uh, extensibility of VLC in Lua for five years. No one knows about it. Um, it's how you can play YouTube video in VLC. I don't know if you know, but you can take any YouTube URL, put it in VLC. VLC is going there. It's going to go in the page, take the video, and just show it in the video, which is good because it uses less CPU. It gives you higher quality than the, the usual RGB scaling issues you see on YouTube HTML5 player or the Flash one. Uh, so now it's directly um, with a new uh, website, uh, api.addons.videoland.org. And yeah, we copied um, Firefox ways uh, because they do a lot of cool stuff. Um, our UI is not yet good, but we're working on that. Um, resume where you left off. Uh, this is probably the biggest feature people ask. Yes. <laughs> um, so on VLC on iOS and Android, uh, since two years, we already have that. And on the version on Windows RT, we have that, but not on the desktop. Um, so we bundled that on, in the Qt uh, UI and the macOS UI. Um, so yeah. Basically, it kind of works. Uh, 
we had a lot of support, um, lots of Ultra HD codec, whatever Ultra HD bullshit means, but HEVC, VP9, Opus, lots of work. Uh, it was already working, but now it works in most formats, <laughs> TS, MKV, MP4. Blu-ray, Java menus actually work now. Uh, so there was been doing an amazing time of uh, code on the Blu-ray. There is many, many commits and huge patch of uh, Java code without spec. I have no idea how they did that. Uh, think that was merged. We support uh, FTPS. Um, digital, digital cinema package, so you can actually play the file who arrive in the movie theaters, the 400 gigs files that come in X3 X files. Uh, okay, most of you won't use that, I know, but some of you might, and we also support uh, the decoding of it, uh, the decryption. So we don't break anything, we just do the EES already if you give us the KDM files. But that means that maybe you could do a, a video, uh, a movie theater video projector based on VLC without buying some JPEG 2000 decoders that cost 25,000 euros. Uh, some people did a lot of cool stuff by adding codecs that were already playback in FF Play or AV Play in LibV codec, and we didn't map them. So stuff very useful like VP7 or Bink or, or DK3. Who knows what DK3 is? Yeah, OK, great. <laughs> Um, and we did a lot of uh, changes on speak FF FFV1 and some profiles like um, VP8 in AUG. Oh yes, v Web VTT. I forgot about that one. Some people actually care about that. Don't know why. <laughs> um, so those are not. We also did a lot of rework. Um, our seeking in AUG and WMV and MP4 was really not good, uh, especially for WMV adult videos, uh, because they all use the same encoder that is broken and does not signal um, the iframe in the same way. So when you were seeking, it went mm, to a gray blocky frame, which is not what you want. Uh, <laughs> so we fixed that. <laughs> um, we added new modules. Um, uh, we added a libvpx, jpeg, uh, svg, and tech and png modules. Uh, mostly those are decoders, and now for the case of distribution like SUSE and Fedora, where they don't ship LibAV codec by default, so you can actually play the whole WebM stack. Um, <coughs> one of the major changes um, is under it is a GPU zero copy. So in the old way, when you were doing hardware decoding in VLC, you take the video, um, you demux it, you take the, the elementary string, you send it to the DSP, it decodes, then you get it back on the CPU, you do two modifications, and then you send it back. So you're doing CPU, GPU, CPU, GPU, which is very slow, especially because memcopy is murder. Uh, thank you. And so now we have uh, what we call zero copy, which is basically we have fake formats. We send directly the data to the, to the GPU, and what we get back is just the ID of the frame. And we go that during the frame, we can do the filtering, and then the video output is just saying, now you display this one, now you display this one, now you display this one. Which is great because it allows us to have um, 1080p or even 4K decoding on Android if your uh, chip can do that. Um, we support that so far with Linux VDPIU, uh, Android Media Codec, and uh, Raspberry Pi uh, Mal uh, things. And we're going to add more uh, of those uh, for 3.0. Uh, we did a lot of stuff in the OS6 uh, um, UI, uh, mostly for Yosemite and multi-video output. Uh, and we also added a lot of encoders, X262, X265, and Opus, JPEG, and PNG. When we're going to release uh, 2.2 next week, I hope, um, we're going to release at the same time iOS, VLC iOS 2.4, Android 1.00, no beta anymore, Windows, um, Windows uh, Modern Metro, 1.0 also, and all of them are, are using libvlc 2.2, which means that libvlc is actually be usable because we use it now. Um, and so that a lot of not many not many functions were added, but a lot were now are now stable and you can use them. So now I'm going to speak about the mobile port. Well, um, VLC for Android has been there since now two years and a half. It's always been a beta. We still work on Android 2.1, even if Google does not like us to do that. Uh, it's a full video player and supports exactly the same because it's libvlc, and as you know, vlc does not exist. <laughs> and it's also, compared to the vlc on the desktop, a full audio player with a database and search and cool stuff that we've never been able to do on the desktop. Don't ask me why. Um, 
The first release were quite ugly with this uh, Maya apocalypse if you use it. Uh, disclaimer, dubious screenshot <laughs> quality and designs. Um, and then we started to move a bit uh, to a cleaner design, but that was not really good. And finally, for 1.0, we are managing to have a white and a black background that match the holotem. Great. Now Android moved to a new tem. Uh, so <laughs> we took, it took us two years to get to holo, and now they moved to material. The good thing is, uh, while we're stabilizing to uh, 1.0 of Android, we already have 1.10, and it's full material and nice and blah, 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 shiny and so on. And it's going probably to be released uh, next month. So for once, we will be on the bandwagon. Um, we have, yes, oops, sorry. Uh, we have 42 million users on, on uh, Android. And 1.10, we have full Android acceleration and Samba coming. Uh, we finished the port on Android TV. We wait for more devices to be out. Uh, and we are full uh, Android L. VLC iOS 2.4 uh, is going out soon. Uh, it still requires uh, iOS uh, 6.1, uh, which is iPhone 3GS. Uh, so far, we have around 10 million users and some cool screenshots. Uh, it's more flat and iOS 8-ish, um, but it's quite, quite good. Um, it's still very fast and uh, faster than uh, our, our ports on Android and, um, and on Windows. Um, it's sad, but it's true. Uh, we support uh, OpenGL shaders to do the chroma conversions. Uh, we have the multi-core decoding. We decode 10, 10 bits of uh, videos. Um, we have an ARM V8 port that is really fast, um, doing more than 1080p in software, um, which we can't do on any other hardware. Uh, we have a Wi-Fi download, so you can upload directly uh, without going through iTunes, but you can also download it, so you can use VLC as a USB key <laughs> for your iPhone, which I'm not sure Apple knows that we do that because it's not compatible with their terms. <laughs> we have added um, call, callbacks, uh, so when you call VLC, you can have info back. So now if you, you just ask and send the protocol and say, well, VLC play that because um, iOS doesn't have some intent like Android, uh, so you can get uh, info back. So that's cool if you have weird codecs and you don't want to ship uh, all those codecs. Uh, and we did a lot of bug fixes. We also have a VLC for Windows RT, uh, Metro uh, UI, so it, it works uh, so far quite well. Uh, there is also, I don't know if you've seen, we've in a beta for Windows Phone, which is an OS where the libc is broken, the video output is broken, the audio output is broken. There is no IPC, there is no compiler. Uh, there is, you're not allowed to access file and you don't have threads. <laughs> but we're getting there. <laughs> and I'm going to finish uh, before they kick me out. And 3.0, so next week we hope we're going to release all the platform of VLC, which is the first one. Um, we've Unfortunately, as I said, we froze VLC 2.2 since a long time. So we, VLC 3.0 is already quite advanced. The most important is that we wrote, we wrote HDS, Dash, and smoothing, smooth streaming support. We are also working on rewriting the HLS support so we can play all those adapting streaming. The only Dash we miss is a WebM one. Uh, we are working on Wayland um, for Linux. Our uh, Linux output is going to be OpenGL by default. Um, we have now zero copy also for the Open Max uh, Android, which is the old version of Android and not the media codec. We support a lot of stuff for Arib subtitle and CAM. None of you are Japanese, I guess, but that's really cool for them. And um, we also, as we did a lot of rework on AVI, uh, MP4, and um, WMV in the, and ORG in the last version. On this version, we've reworked a lot on the MP4 and TS uh, demuxes so that people realize that VLC really plays everything. And then we have uh, Samba and service discovery browsing so that we will finally have a UAPNP support that works. And I got 22 seconds left. And thank you. I can take one question before they kill me. Actually, you have more than this two minutes. Two minutes, two questions. <laughs> Quick questions, yes. I can't answer that. I can answer that tonight. Uh, the question was why the cone, and I will answer later. Outside. Other questions? No questions? Everyone <coughs> fell asleep? Yes? Yeah. How are you still awake at that time? 
Um, um, because I already did one talk this morning, but I had a huge headache because of the Delirium Cafe. And also, <laughs> because now I do 25 minutes talk instead of 50, so that's... Uh, other questions? Yes? Will 215 also update to 220 and then to 300? So usually, um, so the question is, do we update from 2.1.5 to 220? And um, on Windows and Mac, yes. On Android and iOS, yes. On Linux, Linux distribution, do it. What we do is we never update to the first dot zero. Never, ever, ever. Because, well, we're all awesome, but <laughs> usually what we do is we do a dot zero, and then three weeks later we do a dot one, and then we update everyone because, <laughs> well, you broke that, 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 that. What's the update about the Apple Store and uh, Dolby? <laughs> well, um, you're going to see uh, probably, uh, so we are going to push a version of VLC on iOS again uh, this week. Uh, we have the approval. It doesn't have Dolby, but what I can tell you is that the Dolby patterns for, digital, for Dolby digital decoding are all out on June 8, 2015. So we will be back with Dolby. <laughs> Thank you.